Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we're tackling a thermodynamic property uh, problem, very similar to the previous one we solved. Instead of being refrigerant or 134A, we have water. And that's pretty much the only difference because the way of solving it is very, very similar. In this case here, Again, we're using the first law of thermodynamics to solve it, so we need to have an understanding about how pure substance properties work. And the problem statement reads, a rigid 10 liter tank contains a mixture of liquid water and vapor at 100 degrees Celsius with 12% uh, quality, 12.3% quality. Heat is now transferred to the tank until the temperature inside rises to 150 degrees Celsius. Calculate the amount of heat transfer required for this process. So just by looking at those statements, we have that special word rigid, which implies that on state one, when the temperature is 100 degrees Celsius, and on state two, when the temperature is 150 degrees Celsius, the volume will remain the same. So the volume will be the 10 liters, and it will not change because this tank is rigid, and therefore it will not allow the gas or the water, in this case the water vapor, to expand. What else do we know? Um, note that there are two indications here of the same thing. It says that state one is a mixture of liquid and vapor, okay? So that already indicates to us that we're dealing with a saturated mixture to start with and state one, but then it also says we have 12.3% percent quality, right? So it didn't have to say this to us. If it just said it was at 100 Celsius and with 12.3 percent quality, we would already know it's a mixture of liquid water and vapor, right? So you have an extra tip here in this problem. Uh, heat is transferred to the tank, so as heat is going into the tank, the temperature is rising and it rises to 150, and we are to calculate the amount of heat transfer required for this process. So there's actually a drawing similar to the ones I do Generally, when we solve these problems, right, we do a little box here to indicate to what we have inside. We say that this is our first state, so this will be our state one. We have water inside. We know it's a saturated mixture, and it's at 100 degrees Celsius, and it has a quality of 0.123 or 12.3%. And then we're going to give, give heat to this, to this um, system, to this rigid tank. To this reservoir and it will go and increase its temperature to 150 and at this point here i don't know whether it's a mix or not so i cannot say anything about the quality all we know it's it gained some energy and therefore because it gained some energy the temperature increased okay what else do we know we know the volume one here is equal to 10 liters and we know that volume two has to be equal to volume one. Why? Because a rigid tank, right? Also, there's no mass being lost. So my specific volume one, which is just the volume, the volume divided by the mass, will be also equal to my specific volume two, which is equal to the volume divided by the mass. And because the mass and the volume are the same, that means that specific volume one and two are the same. Okay? So note how from the start we have two sets of properties for the both uh, states. We have temperature, 100 C for the first one, and quality. With those two things, we can completely define state one. And then state two, we have the temperature, and then we're missing a second one, but we know the volume has to be the same, so the volume is going to be 10 liters. And because we have the first state completely defined, we can find what is the mass. With the mass, we can find specific volume, and then we're going to have specific volume, which is going to be our second defining state here for state two. Sorry, second defining property. Okay, that is the idea. And what is our overall goal? Our goal is to find out what is the amount of heat required to go from state one to state two. And what do we know about that? Well, we know the first law of thermodynamics tells us that we cannot create or destroy energy, right? So that means that if that's the case, the difference in internal energy of a closed system will be equal to any heat entering or leaving and any work being done by or in to the system. In this case here, my delta V, my difference in volume is nil, it's zero, because the tank is rigid. So therefore, if my difference in volume is nil, then my work is also nil. And if that's the case, then this guy goes away to zero, and any difference in internal energy will be equal in magnitude to my heat transfer. 
Okay, so note that in this case here, we know heat is being given to my tank, right? So from state one to state two, I'm giving energy. You can also see here in destroy, there's a Q going into my water. So what does that mean? It means that my U2, right? My U that I find at the end, U2 in terms of energy at state two, will be necessarily greater than U1, right? Because note that all the heat that I'm giving to my system is incurring in the increase of internal energy of that very same system. So the game plan here is let's, we have everything we need for state one. So let's go ahead and wrap what is the internal energy U1. Let's at the same time calculate what is the specific volume in state one, because that's going to be exactly the same volume as state two. And once we have these two properties here for state two, we can calculate U2, that is the internal energy for state two. Once you grab U1 and U2, we can go ahead and calculate what is the heat that was given to the system. Okay, that's the game plan. For that, uh, property tables, property tables of water, obviously, because we're dealing with water. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look for a saturated property table at 100 degrees Celsius. It's going to be quite straightforward. So water table, I'm looking at the saturated water table because I have a saturated mixture. I'm looking at the temperature table and I'm just looking for 100 here. Here it is, 100. This is where I'm going to grab all my values from. I am interested in two things. I'm interested in the internal energy here. And I'm also interested in the specific volume for state two, right? So let's start grabbing the internal energy. I know it's a mixture. 12% of this energy is coming from my vapor. So I'm reading it off this guy here. And the reminder is coming from the liquid. So I'm reading it off this fellow here. Okay, so that means that my internal energy is going to be 12% of 2506. And the reminder is going to be from the 419.06. Okay, so U1 because saturated mixture is calculated as U1 will be U of the vapor times X, right? Quality, that's how much vapor I have. And U of the liquid times whatever is not vapor, one minus X. So in this case here, this will be um, 2506 times the 12.3. So we can do it 12.3.123, same thing, plus the 419.06 times the 1 minus the 0.123. This gives me that my internal energy for state 1 is 675.75, oops, 0.75 kilojoules per kilogram. <clears throat> And that is that. So that is one of the things I need. What else do I need? I also need specific volume of state one, which happens to be the same as state two. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to take the specific volume of the vapor and I'm going to multiply that by my quality. And I'm going to take my specific volume of the liquid, liquid, oops, liquid, and multiply that by one minus my quality. Okay. <clears throat> um, this case here, I'm reading off this value here is for the vapor and this one here for the liquid. And all I'm doing is literally trying to find out what is the specific volume for my second state, which happens to be the first state too. So here <clears throat> I'm going to grab, I'm going to multiply 0 0.672 by my 0 0.123 plus I'm multiplying my double zero 0.1043 by 1 minus 123.123. And my specific volume one happens to be 0 0.2066 meters cubed per kilogram. And this has to be the specific volume two as well. Okay, so now know that we have two set of two thermodynamic properties for state two. First one is the specific volume. Second one is the temperature because T2 is 150 and we knew that from the start, right? We knew that from the start. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check whether my state two is a saturated mixture or a superheated uh, fluid. There are the two options. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to 150 here. Let's find 150. Here we are. And I'm going to check whether my specific form that I found is falls between these two guys or if it's greater than the right hand side. And we have 0.2. And 0.2, you can see 0.2 falls between the double zero one and the 0.3. So therefore, we can conclude that state two is a saturated mixture. Perfect. And if that's the case, then I can calculate U2 by doing the same thing. U of the vapor times X 
plus u of the liquid times 1 minus x. The only problem is that I don't know x, right? Because I don't know the quality of the second state. Obviously, as I'm giving energy, as I'm giving heat to the system, some of the liquid is being transformed to vapor, right? Some of the liquid is going from liquid form to vapor form, so the water, I should say. So now I need to know what is that x. And to do that, what I can actually do is we can look, we can take advantage of the fact that because we know the specific volume 2, and we know it's a mixture, we know specific volume 2 is just the vapor times x plus the, the, the liquid one times 1 minus x. And in this case, I know this guy, I know this guy, I know this guy. The only thing I don't know in this equation is my x. So I can solve for x by doing v2 minus v liquid divided by v vapor minus v liquid. Right? In this case here, we have, this is known, this is 0.2066. v liquid, I can grab it off there. That's going to be the triple one, uh, sorry, double one. Uh, 1, 10, 91, and the uh, paper one is 0.39. Okay, so that is very straightforward. 1, 1, 10, 9, 1, divided by 3, 9, 2, 48, minus 1, 1, 10, 91. And this gives me about 0.525. So that means approximately, not approximately, that means 62.5%. Okay, so that means that, remember, we had about 12% before that was liquid in the mixture, and now we have about 52%, which is vapor. Sorry, I think I inverted that. So we had about 12% that was vapor in the mixture, and now we have about 52%, which is vapor in the mixture, right? So that's the effect of us giving heat to the system. So now I can go back to this idea here. So now that I know that, I can go back to calculating this. What I'm doing is grabbing the, the values for the internal energy, this guy and this guy here. So 631 and 2559. Okay, so they're straightforward. That's going to be the 2559.1. This will be the 0.525 plus the 631.66 times the 1 minus 52.5. And this tells me that my U2 equals 1,643.57. Same here as a table, kilojoules per kilograms. Okay, now there's another way of doing it, and I'll show you, once we finish this question, I'll show you the other way of calculating this. It's really the same thing, but you can use a different value off the table. And some of you might prefer it that way, so let's, we can do that later. So what we're after, what we're really after is, um, if you recall, the heat, which happens to be the same in magnitude as the difference in internal energy, which is just U2 minus U1. U2, we know, is 1600-ish. U1, we know to be six, 675. So the difference between the two is 967.82. And that is in kilojoules per kilogram. Now, when the question does not specify, you are welcome to stop here. But because we can find out the mass, it's probably a good idea to calculate the mass. Because generally, when we want to know the amount of heat that was given, we're not really interested in the amount of heat per kilogram. We want to know the total amount of heat. And in this case, it's easy for us to calculate the mass because we've known from the start, where, where are we? Back to the start. We've known from the start that we had 10 liters, right? And if we have 10 liters and we happen to know the specific volume, we can calculate the mass quite easily, right? So let's do that now. Here. So the mass will just be my volume divided by my specific volume. In the case here, it can be V1 or V2, they're the same. In the case here, I have 10 liters. So 10 liters is the same thing as 10 to the minus 3 meters cubed. And we have the specific volume that we calculated at some point, which was, I forget what it was, 0 And this is in meters cubed per kilogram. So our, our division here is going to render uh, a number in kilograms, and that is 0.4. Oh, here's it right. 0.4. Oops. 0.0484 kilograms. Okay. So that is the amount of liquid water we have inside this tank. It's tiny. So what we can do now is with this number here, with this number here, we can find out what is the total heat that was given to the system, not just the specific heat per mass, but actually the total heat. So I'm going to go ahead and do, you know, delta U, 
double the roots indicator. This is the uppercase one. I'm going to be multiplying these two numbers here, and that is going to give me 46.8 kilojoules. Okay, so that will be the answer. That's the amount of, of actually, that, that's not right the answer, right? This, this is the amount of change in delta U, but we know that this happens to be also the amount of heat given. So the amount of heat given to the system is 46.8 kilojoules, right? So we know that because of the first law of thermodynamics. All right, so if we can, you know, we can flip this problem and say, hey, if you have, um, you know, this state one with 100 Celsius and 12.3%, how much energy do you need to give so that it goes to 150 degrees Celsius in a rigid sink that is without changing its fault? Well, the amount of energy you need to give is 46.8 kilojoules. If I give 46.8 kilojoules, I'll be going from a saturated mixture state in which about 12% of my mixture is vapor in mass to a mixture, to still a saturated mixture that has about 50%, 52% of the mass being vapor, right? And to do that, I have to give 46.8 kilojoules. Now, just to finish off, I'll show you what I've said, which is the other way you can do um, this piece here of math or any, for that matter, any kind of, of, of um, situation in which you have to, to combine two things. You note that <clears throat> the middle column here, the middle column here has an evaporation rate, which is literally just this column minus this, this column, all right? So note, for instance, this first one, because this one is zero, these two values are the same. Okay, so what I can do here in this one here that we were calculating before um, the internal energy is I can grab this value here. Oops, I can grab this value here, the 1927, and I can use it to calculate. Why? Because check it out, the internal energy, right, internal energy two, would just be the vapor times x plus the liquid times one minus x. So that means that I can rewrite this equation as okay, vapor x plus liquid minus u liquid x, right? So just multiplying there, the parentheses. So now I can put the x in evidence. And what, that ha what happens here is that I have u liquid plus x of u vapor minus u liquid, right? And if that's the case, then note that these two guys here, this is the difference. This is what the column is giving us. So what I can do here is simplify this to U liquid plus X U difference. I have to do it in the table. Okay, so instead of doing this, I can do this. Okay, the advantage here is that you don't have the subtraction, so you have one one operation less to do. Um, but in my mind, I think it gets a bit far from what you're doing in terms of understanding it, so I prefer doing it this way every single time. But if you were to do it this way here, you get obviously exactly the same answer. So that this would be six. 31.66 plus the 52, right? 0.525 times the difference there to the 1927.4. And you can do and check and you see that it's exactly the same value that we get out of it. Okay. So I hope this helped you out. If you have any questions, just put them down in the comment section. If this video was useful, consider liking it and we'll talk soon.